ecology feel like really important interesting connections that we can make as well. So here's what I set up on Guru and here here's our curriculum design questions that I still haven't resolved. One of the things I've kind of decided is that if you make if you put the assignments inside the collections that you get this kind of neither this nor that um, too big um, confusing collection of stuff so I, I like the idea of keeping the collections on Guru somewhat simple and focused on the material at hand Um, so, that's one design principle. The other is that, you know, have these shelves, or they don't call them shelves, I think they almost should, but segments. Um, and the uh, first segment I've kind of felt is should be the kind of first experience, All right? But it doesn't have to be the first experience. It needs to be the first experience with materials as I just kind of convinced myself. <laughs> um, so, I, I guess I'm trying to argue that if you start with that wide open James A. B. notion of 10 self, 10 world questions, and you build from there themes that can be explored. We can then uh, give a limited universe of th things for them to look at. And here's where the word limited is not correct. It's a creative process of finding materials that will inspire, involve, and uh, fascinate young people. But also, I think, challenge them. So, I was excited that Zoe Flute wants to do the bird project. I think she'll be great at it. And, uh, but, you know what, one of the things that's interesting is that when she was able to select her own resources for an inquiry project, those resources were pretty thin. Uh, so, uh, that, that feels like a role of, of the teacher to say, you know what, you can do this. Here's, here's water that's a little deeper, and you can swim in this water, but let's swim in that one too. You know, uh, so I've set that up. There's uh, introductory materials about what's this project about. There are also some bird guides and how to identify birds and what are their habitats and all that kind of more textbooky stuff. And I think both of those are somewhat useful for choice. Um, but I want to sort of require the videos. I don't think I need to. I think the videos are fascinating. I found 20. That uh, look at the birds. Now, I want to get back to Christy on this. One of the things that I'd love to do is figure out how we could put cams into the bird houses as well. Um, 
So that's something to think about. But, uh, because those cams gave the videos. At least I can make some videos. We have to think about all the media side of this because instead of recording on to uh, pieces of paper and bring them back to the computer, it would be great if they could upload their observations right away using a, an app. Um, yeah. I'm kind of running out of things to say here. There's, so, there's another level that I've thought about, and uh, that's looking at scientists. And what I like about that is that the language the scientists use just to describe his own interests. This guy Winsler. Um, it's pretty complex, and uh, but, but interesting too at the same time, and it kind of shows a lot about how science works and and why these uh, little birds are important. So I want them to read that description and then read another kind of easier narrative description of him. But then I think they would be set up with enough vocabulary and familiarity with the issues. It really is both those, the context and the, and the words, that they could take on the scientific studies that have been published in journals, which, of which I've found three so far. Um, Plus, again, a video in which a uh, project up in Michigan that uses boxes uh, allows for, um, well, it does, allows for, it introduces the concept of how these swallows can be used um, to measure toxic toxicity of uh, the water's impact on animal life and plant life, particularly polluted areas. So, even the idea that we could be making these boxes so that later the scientists could come and use them to study the Bronx River makes such a wonderful connection back to when we get out rowing on that river and thinking about what's in it. So, again, can you just see the connections just growing organically and back and forth between text and experience? And that obviously feels like an important element as well in any kind of curriculum design. But you have both. Um, that you build boxes that you row on the river, but that you understand um, how those, how scientists use boxes just like the one you built to, to do scientific studies and environmental studies and of uh, your neighborhood. Which gets us, of course, to the civic ecology, which I understand those two words um, and, and kind of get the feeling level of being connected to the nature where you live. Um, but I kind of don't totally understand it. But that's, I guess, one of the things I'd like to find out more about. And one of the ways, again, where you can start with birds, end up with rivers, end up with ecology, 
and then end up with you know, how does your neighborhood work in this ecology? So, yeah. So lots of desperate young people um, at my school today talking about feeling level because they've been told that if they don't demonstrate that they can get some credits that they will be uh, dismissed from our school and uh, they moved on to a program, a night program where they can try to earn their credits and uh, many don't want to do that so desperately coming to me and saying how can I get credit? What can I do? And I'm off on this <laughs> creative, fun exploration about birds. So I say, you want to get credit? Let's learn about swallows. <laughs> Tough, man. I don't mind. I think it's interesting. But I think it is. <clears throat> challenging and uh, engaging so those are some really kind of way first draft they're not first draft it's not fair to call this first draft but it is because it's a, a sort of gathering together my thinking around what is curriculum and I wonder if I could maybe summarize, I don't know you know some of the things I said that was kind of surprised me were looking at the um, kind of I don't want to call it contrary but um, The, what did the deconstruction we call it? But I, um, the built-in oppositional notion of start anywhere. Now, start anywhere means that uh, your curriculum doesn't matter, and therefore you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what's kind of fun and when you can do anything you can kind of be open to swallows or open to anything that comes to you and uh, and find meaning in it and it's that act of finding meaning that is what learning is all about isn't it Yeah, like I was submarizing? I don't think so. Um, oppositions is the word I was trying to think of. Um, binary oppositions. So, there's a an old friend, binary oppositions. It's worth structuring some of this thinking around since it just kind of, kind of came up that way. Uh, and I mean that the uh, binary oppositions are kind of yin, yin and yang or something. That, provide you with a spectrum of thought that allows you to 